You have three days to make a game. Go! How do you even start something like that? I was put in this situation a couple of days ago when Game Jolt announced a three day game making competition. The prize wasn't money, but that three large YouTubers would play the games, giving them incredible amounts of publicity. How could I turn down a chance like this? I cancelled everything I had planned for the weekend, sat down and began making the game. But I couldn't focus. I was all over the place, as though it was a race but I didn't know where the finishing line was. Even though the competition had only just begun, I felt under pressure to do… something. I knew that elsewhere were hundreds of developers, all busily coding their latest and greatest titles. But the ideas just weren't coming to me. I like big and dramatic, but that doesn't work well with the time constraints or the arcadey themed competition. I wasn't getting anything done. So I got up, left the house and went shopping. Suddenly everything slowed down for me. I was able to think about what would work and what wouldn't. I got excited at the opportunities and imagined how I was going to pace myself for the next three days. I got the supplies that I needed and returned to my house where I entombed myself in my room and began on the game. My idea was to make the best game ever too. The original was a series of random mini-games and had a strange sense of humour, both being factors that I thought would appeal to YouTubers doing Let's Plays. I think that this took higher priority than the gameplay itself for me. This isn't about making a brilliant game. It's about making an entertaining one that people can easily relate to. I started on the project, making a 3D maze. I was thinking of making it like a labyrinth from that David Bowie movie, filled with traps and puzzles. I decided to start with bombs, which had been a successful feature in the first game. With game development, especially one with such strict deadlines, it's essential for you to focus on what's important. I've been bad at this in the past. I started with the background clouds in the Bat Sweeper, adding physics to Santa's bobble hat in Santa's Atlas, and now I've just spent an hour coding an elaborate physics system for the bomb debris. It looked awesome. Although it was completely 2D, it properly ordered them so they looked 3D as they showered up into the air before plummeting back down to earth like oversized Maltesers. It was mesmerising to watch and wasn't too intensive to run either, meaning that I could have thousands of them bouncing about if I wanted to. Philip, you idiot. This is meant to be a simple arcade game, not an advert for an Nvidia graphics card. And in addition to this, the maze bit of this maze game was rubbish. When testing it I almost deliberately walked into the bombs just to see the explosion. Wildly clicking the fire button to test the physics was more enjoyable than the playable bit of the game. This project was headed for disaster. I began panicking again, wildly clicking on things before clicking off them again because I didn't know what I was doing. Half a day was gone and I had nothing to show for it. So I went shopping again and that feeling of serenity returned. I kicked myself when I remembered a puzzle game that I had made a few years ago, Impossible Mission. I could have made a sequel for that, it would have been perfect for this competition. It was a simple physics puzzle where you changed gravity and used power ups to get to the end goal. The appeal of this game was how well the gameplay elements complemented each other. They could be combined in almost countless ways. It was as though the game generated its own gameplay. It wasn't just easy to make levels for either, it was fun to make them. And better still, it was fun to play them as well. A lot more fun than a difficult to make maze adventure game. But I was already invested in this maze game with next gen physics. Could I really justify throwing it all away? Stop. If you've played the game I ended up making for this competition, you'll be screaming at how obvious the solution to my situation is. If you haven't seen it, you're in for a real treat because I can now talk you through how I turned an abysmal maze game into something really fun. If you want, you could pause this video and try to think up what you would have done. Imagine that you were in my situation and had just over two days to make a game. I looked on the positive side. The maze sucked, but those physics were nice. Why don't I turn it into a game about blowing stuff up? That way it could show off the physics, which really did feel powerful and juicy. Suddenly it was a maze game with Bomberman style gameplay where you had to blow up walls to reach an end goal. It's the isometric equivalent to Impossible Mission, where simple gameplay elements are combined to make something with a surprising amount of depth. I began building mazes out of different types of blocks. Those you could blow up, and those you couldn't. It wouldn't exactly be a puzzle game if you could burrow in a straight line towards your goal, would it? You start with a single mine and would have to collect more as you progress through the maze. If you planted the mine in the wrong place, you'd make it impossible and have to restart. This in itself sounded decent, though the gameplay would consist of you analysing the maze, planning a route and then carrying it out. It was kind of boring and difficult to make exciting. I added another wall type that was easier to destroy. This added another dimension to it. Now you had to choose between blowing up that weak wall and getting a small number of mines, or that bigger wall with more mines behind it. But it was still just an exercise in maths. It needed that fun element. That beautiful balance between skill and luck that arcade games use to hook you in before making you play it endlessly to try and beat the high scores. One third of the way through the challenge and I had at least something to work with. 
but the clock was ticking and I was relying on the second day to be far more productive than the first. 